I'm going to ask you about one of the biggest scandals that rocked the adult industry. One that I just remember distinctly because my parents actually sat me down and told me that mommy and daddy might go to jail. And they tried to explain to me what to do if the cops came and dragged them out of the house in the middle of the night because that's what they were expecting. Right. And that was... As we all were. Yeah. And that was the Tracy Lord scandal. So Tracy Lords was a very popular porn star who turned out to be underage. Allegedly. Do we really know that she was underage? <laughs> I thought you were going to say, do we really know that she was popular? <laughs> no, she was very popular. I mean, I had no f***ing idea she was, if she was underage. Mm-hmm. So I wrote a scene where we're 13 in a tent exploring. You know, and, you know, a, a year later, I'm, I'm, you know, in trouble for making this movie, uh, one of my partners was arrested. The other one, they did raid his home, and he ended up uh, having to go to a, a, a mental facility for a while just to, to get his head straight because wow. he had shot Tracy so much. Yeah. Um, but when Tracy came out with, with being underage or, you know, I, I was called before the U.S. attorney to speak before a grand jury. And I refused, and they told me if I didn't go, they would make my life very difficult. So I went before the grand jury, and they showed me photographs that were taken from behind trees, from in a bush, from over here. I, I saw photographs of Tracy and directors and producers and myself taken by people from hidden areas. So whether... She turned herself in, whether she really was underage. They f- knew that she was making porn before anybody did anything. I've seen the photos. Um, I just, I have nothing nice to say about it. She ruined so many people's lives. I ended up, uh, they wanted, when I didn't help the grand jury, I have a really bad memory. And my grandfather taught me, you never snitch, you never steal, you never lie. Mm-hmm. You know, those are just, you just don't. Mm-hmm. And, uh so I didn't snitch. I didn't remember anybody's name. And you don't know people's names. You know, they're Bubba or they're whoever mm-hmm. they are. You yeah. know, Ernie is probably somebody else, too. <laughs> you know, uh, everybody's got a different name. Right. So uh, five years to the day after the grand jury appear- appearance, I'm, at, I'm dating Charlie Sheen at the time. I'm at Charlie's house. And my attorney calls me. We're, we're on shrooms. We're like tripping out and making fun of Mary Steenburgen's name because we were so high. <laughs> Mary Steenburgen, Mary Steenburgen. <laughs> and we were ta- I, I remember because we were taking photos and we were wearing shades and we were just being really goofy and having mm-hmm. a good time. And my attorney calls and says, you've been indicted. And I'm like, for what? And they paid someone for five fucking years to watch every movie that I ever made, read every interview that I ever did, follow every move that I made. They tried to charge me with tax evasion, and at that point in time, it was not mandatory that employers 1099 their employees. Right. So I had $2,087.04 in my checking account that I didn't have a 1099 to go with. And so what they charged me with was willfully subscribing to a false tax return. They claimed what they tried to get people to say was that they had paid me in cash too. So they were saying that, you know, I had made all this money in cash and they just couldn't find it. So I knew that I'd made more and $2,087 and four fucking cents. It was just because I didn't help. And so what happened, we're getting back around to Tracy here, is that I was, I got 750 hours of community service. And three years of probation, which included mandatory drug testing. So I had a number I had to call every night and see if I had to go in and test the next day. So I do my 750 hours of community service. I am such a geek. I knit. And so I would tour and strip. And in between my shows, I'm in the back knitting. I did all these blankets for people in wheelchairs. So I did over 100 of them for my kids. That's, what I, that's how I did my community service. Oh, my gosh. And... Two weeks before I'm off probation, uh, I'd been given permission to fly to Cannes for the film festival. Mm-hmm. I'm in Cannes. I'm on the beach doing a press, a press junket. And I look down the beach and somebody has a bigger one. I'm like, who the fuck is down there? So I finish mine and I go down to the other one. It's just like, <laughs> Who's got more people <laughs> than got- me? <laughs> and it's Charlie. Uh-huh. And we had broken up. There was, we, we were together steady for two years and then had three years of off and on. Mm-hmm. So this was during our off period. And he's like, Come, come with me to Vienna. 
and I don't have permission to go to Vienna. And I'm like, all right, let's go to Vienna. So I fly to Vienna and we were not very quiet about our goings out. I was actually engaged temporarily to someone else at the time. Mm -hmm. So I'm wearing a ring. So the press picks up. Charlie and I are in Vienna. I'm wearing a ring. It's on the news. My probation officer sees it. When I get back that first time I call, I'm going in for a drug test. I've been in Vienna for two weeks with the entire cast of of uh, the Three Musketeers and Charlie Sheen and Charlie Sheen. <laughs> I am not going to pass my fucking drug test. <laughs> There's no way. Yeah. Do not collect two hundred dollars. Go straight to jail. So uh, I test dirty, yeah. and I'm supposed to. I've got a, a noon turn in time, and so my father and my grandfather drive out from Illinois, and they're they're at my house. Um, I'm still in bed. They go to my bank to clear out my my money and all my possessions and my safe deposit boxes because I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. So uh, the marshals, I get a phone call and and uh, they hang up. Five minutes later, the marshals are at my door, and I'm not letting them in. My, yeah. It's me and my grandma in there, and. I know, but the thing is, I'm supposed to turn myself in, and they they came at like 10 in the morning, two hours before, just to humiliate me. Mm. And so eventually, they did get the the hinges, the door off the hinges. Oh, my God. Well, I'm literally tearing bed sheets. I'm on the third floor. My condo's on the third floor, (laughs) and I'm trying to, like, make an escape. (laughs) <laughs> so, oh my god uh, but my dad got back right as I got the door off and I was able to say goodbye to my dad mm-hmm. and I went directly to uh, the, the holding cell downtown from there I went to MDCLA which is maximum security mm-hmm. in with with uh, murderers, weapons dealers, drug dealers uh, the worst of the worst I'm in yeah. with some really really bad people and uh there's there's a lot of things that happened when I was in prison. I, I'm working on a book right now, which is very close to being done. It's called I Don't Look Good on Paper. 